Hi, I'm Coffee Kevin, and I'm here today with one of my longest friends in the coffee business, and it's uh, Oren Bluestein of Oren's Daily Roast. Oren is uh, uh, one of the, I don't know, I guess you could say one of the greatest roasters that I've met. He is uh, in New York, and he started roasting. He is the to me represents what the lifeblood of the industry and that is people that just you know knew how to taste the best coffees and then roasted them and uh, sold sold focused his retail on the coffee itself and the beans actually uh, more of a would you say more more of a bean operation or initially than a cafe oh, totally or? we were definitely a coffee store and we had a little beverage on the side I mean, I, I, we were, I was, that we're, we're a coffee store that sells beverage, not a cafe that sells beans. Definitely a bean centric store. So I asked you a couple of weeks ago, if you could, uh, you know, uh, taste some coffees with me on air and we could, uh, go through with people what it's like to, first of all, to set up tasting and then, uh, how to do it at home and then, because that's where we're going to be tasting right now for the time being, and, and maybe beyond. And the other thing is uh, then to share some tasting notes about what to expect from different types of, of uh, bean varieties. And you sent two coffees, so uh, tell me about the coffees that you sent. A Sulawesi from Indonesia and a, a Kenya, uh, a double A Kenya, and they, they, the characteristics of those coffees are uh, very much uh, diametrically opposite. The, the Sulawesi is known for its uh, rich, well, not rich, I hate that word rich, for its, for its full uh, drippy body. Uh, and the Kenya is known for its whiny acidity. And uh, what we do when we roast uh, in, in our machines uh, is we, we can develop both uh, body and acidity. Uh, it's uh, as opposed to just one or the other, and uh, the so the, these are both very uh, balanced. They're not necessarily balanced coffees, but they have all the characteristics that you want in a cup to to have a complete cup of coffee. The Sulawesi beans. You can see that they're, they're they tend to be on the large side. And these are these are the Kenya. They're a little smaller and a little darker. You can see a drop of oil on the surface. I, I guess when you cup coffees, I noticed your cupping. You you mentioned you were going to cup three coffees today. Uh, I'm sorry, three three. You're cupping two coffees, but you're cupping them each multiple times. And I guess the question is, why do you do that? So we put down, I only put down two cups of each type of coffee, which is uh, actually very few. Uh, typically, a broker would be putting down anywhere from five to eight cups of a, a particular coffee. And you do that because uh, there may be something in one or more of the cups that are not in all of the cups. So it could be, it could be something very positive, or more usually it's something negative, some, some kind of defect that shows up. And the more cups you put down, the more chance you have of finding the defect. So I put down just two cups, uh, just because, I mean, I usually am dealing with very high quality coffees to begin with. And, and if I find anything even remotely negative, we, we don't take the coffee. What's the difference between cupping as it's now done in specialty, which is your, where, what you do, and cupping, let's say, uh, 30 years ago, uh, 40 years ago, and I, I realize you weren't necessarily cupping then, but w what it would have been for larger companies, let's say a Hills Brothers or, or a, a Folgers or someone like that, what, what would there, what would, the, are there procedural differences in cupping? Uh, no, the procedures would would be the same. Uh, uh, I I don't usually spit. 
I mean, it's typically uh, cuppers will be spinning because they're assessing more samples than, than I do in any given sitting. Uh, but otherwise, no, you're using a prescribed amount of, of roasted coffee, ground a, a certain way, with a certain amount of water, and uh, you, you, you let it steep for a certain amount of time before you break the crust. It's, it's all uh, very much the same. The cupping procedure is very much the same. The, what you may be looking for is, is different, but that, that could be true of, of any individual company uh, at, at any given time. Okay, so you're looking, but you're looking for both uh, attributes, special qualities, but you're also looking for problems in, the, in that particular batch of coffee as well. Do I understand that correctly? Yeah, I see what you're saying. So, uh, uh, what we, we're looking for, we're looking for really the positives in a, in a cup of coffee that really make it stand out special. Uh, we're not looking for just an average cup of coffee that there's no, there, that there are no defects, uh, present. We're looking for something where there are a lot of positives present, where there's a certain amount of acidity, there are some floral aspects, there's some fruit aspects, uh, you want uh, a certain amount of balance. Uh, you want things that are not necessarily in just an average cup of coffee. So I'm I'm looking for uh, I'm assuming uh, that there are no negatives. And so if we find anything negative, we immediately uh, chuck that sample. That we don't we don't we don't buy that coffee. Now, when you cup, are you also looking for coffees that are just stand? I, I'll use the term stand on their own. Are going to be single origin coffees, or do you look for coffees to blend? Well, that's a good question. I mean, uh, most of the coffee that go, that's that's consumed in the world is consumed as, as part of a blend. But what we do is we're only buying coffees that are uh, single origin varietals that are good enough to be consumed as a straight coffee and uh and any blending we do we do with these same single origin varietals so uh the quality of the coffee beans that we're using to blend with are far far higher uh in quality than than your typical blender co coffees during cupping do you ever make a note to yourself oh i'm going to want to roast this a little darker when i'm in production or lighter for that matter we have uh, years of experience for each uh, origin. So we, we, we typically know in advance the kind of uh, profile we're going to want on each of these varietals that are, uh, and then from, from that uh, basic point, we will uh, assess the roast out of the production roaster uh, and then make any further adjustments as necessary. That's why I get uh, I get a produ production sample out of for each new coffee, uh, and then and then I make my uh, assessment of that coffee, and and we see if we need to make any adjustments in the production roaster. Okay, well let's uh, we might as well. I think let's get started. And I, I'm I'm eager to try some coffee. I could use a cup of coffee right now. <laughs> so the uh, the, uh, the standards that I use are. Uh, I use ten and a half grams of of coffee, of roasted coffee, to uh, approximately 195 milliliters of, of water just off the boil, and uh, I let that steep uh, for four minutes, which I believe is the standard for a cup of excellence, and then uh, I break the crust and I assess the the uh, aroma from from the crust. And then I wait about uh, five more minutes to let it cool down uh, enough to be uh, assessed without burning my tongue. And that, that's, that's the process. And then I, then I slurp and don't spit. If there, if, there's, if there are 10 samples on the table, then I spit. But, but otherwise, I just have two samples on the table, and I'm not going to spit. So, so right now, I have, I have uh, ground coffee in, in these two uh, cups. And uh, I'm going to just assess the fragrance before I pour the water. Well, that's, it's a very light fragrance, almost, almost, a, almost a little bit of green apple uh, in, in, the, in the nose there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure the water is uh, still hot. 
and uh, gonna get my my timer ready. I'm gonna use like water around around two o five, two o four, two o six, something like that, just off the boil. And I'm gonna start the timer. And uh, I'm going to assess the the aroma of the of the crust before it's broken. Uh, I'll wait another minute. Uh, you can see the um, that bubbles form in the in the coffee in the crust. Now that, that's carbon dioxide, which is you know holding the the aroma. So as those little bubbles are breaking, uh, you're getting a, a aroma release. And again, we're looking for, we're hoping for positives, but we're certainly looking for any negatives. It's similar. I, uh, I don't know that I'm getting any green apple in this fragrance, but it's, there's a sweetness to it. And uh, uh, a nice, a nice sort of a, a clean, uh, smooth, Aroma. I don't know what that you normally call aroma smooth, but this is this is a very nice, uh, clean, sweet uh, aroma. This is this is the Sulawesi. The Sulawesi. I've got uh, the the Kenya is going to be cool enough to cut when when I break this uh, uh, crust. Yeah, I learned I learned to make sure the coffee was cool. Uh, when I, I was at a cup of excellence and uh, there was a, a famous Guatemalan cupper uh, who uh, I hadn't had a chance to cup with all uh, for, for the first three days. And I was then placed at a table with him. So uh, I emulated what he was doing. Uh, and uh, so when he started uh, cupping, uh, I started cupping. Well, I found out that his tongue must have been made of leather because my tongue was, was damaged when I started cupping it. It was way too hot, way, way, way too hot. And it's a good thing it was the last uh, uh, table of the day because uh, my palate was ruined for, for, the, for, the, for the session. And uh, after that, I made sure that I, I, I let the coffee cool enough so that uh, I could actually taste the coffee without hurting myself. Let me, let me just cut, cut uh, break this crust. Just start three times. I, I let my nose follow the spoon almost, almost all the way to the cup. And the, the break was, it was, it was very clean. There was nothing, nothing, no off notes there. And I'm going to do my, my special, uh, cupping alone technique of just blowing on the on the top of the coffee instead of instead of scooping the the uh uh what i found uh in ethiopia was the uh immense variety and quality of uh natural coffees uh, before I had only tasted the Ethiopian Longberry Harar, uh, which is a famous uh, natural coffee, and it was terrific. And we had we had uh, a really top quality Harar, but we tasted coffees from uh, Urichef that were uh, naturals, from uh, Sadamo, from Jima, from from all around the country, and they were all. Uh, well, I mean, they, they were, many of them were sensational. Uh, we ended up buying a, uh, uh, an early chef that was a natural early chef that I, I, we just found, uh, uh, just amazing. My, my old staff still, still talks about that coffee. Uh, this was like, uh, 14 years ago. Uh, but, uh, a very memorable coffee and, uh, it was, it was, it was really made, uh, my theory on 
on Ethiopian coffee, it really expanded my, my, my ability to select coffees there. And they also were bringing, as a result, more of those coffees to market, which they hadn't done before. I've had some great Urgachev coffees. I've had some, and a, a lot of uh, my favorites have been from your place. And uh, yeah, I have had some good naturals. I, I bet I've had one or two of the uh, of that vintage that you're talking about. Finch, Finch Weha was the was the name of that uh, cooperative. It was really still remember. We we managed to uh, get down there and visit visit them also uh, on the next. Uh, the next trip we made there. Made, I made three trips to Ethiopia. Uh, it's really, the people are just amazing. Uh, would you like to start uh, trying to uh, do a little cupping on the, on the Kenya? We, we have, uh, I'm sure it's good temperature at this point. So, so uh, I'm gonna dip my spoon in gently, so I'm not gonna get any particulate matter that might be floating there, hopefully none. And I'm gonna I'm gonna slurp it like up uh, up so it hits the top of my palate and aerate it a little bit. Okay. And okay. usually I do two from the same cup. First one kind of acclimates, and the second one tastes. All right, let me. Try. So this is the this is the Kenya, two. right? Yeah, this is the Kenya. This is this is not uh, you're not getting this is not one of the Kenyas that you are going to get like a raspberry uh, note to it. And if you were, it would have been you know some months ago because this coffee, coffee, while we're waiting for new crop Kenyas to come in uh, like May, uh, probably May. Uh, so this this coffee is is sort of on its I would say it's on its last legs, but. I mean, and we keep it in grain pro bags, so it's it's uh, it helps keep the degradation of uh, the age the aging down. Uh, so it doesn't it's not doesn't taste baggy, but it's lost its uh, its its true brightness. I mean, it's it's got some acidity, it's balanced, it's got some body. Um, let me taste the other cup here. I got another cup. Sure. It's not, it's not the whiniest. Um, yeah, this coffee, this coffee is. Uh, it's a good thing we only have like a bag or two left of this lot because it's it's really it's doesn't taste baggy, but but it's really lost its verve. It's not it doesn't have this, the the whininess that you would normally expect of the Kenya. I'm sure you're getting the same thing. What do you think? I think of a, a Kenya as very bright, and I'm not, it doesn't seem as bright. It's like a, a no, little more no. muted. No, if, if the feed that I was assessing to purchase, I would not buy this car. Uh, did we, so we should, we should try the Sulawesi, right? Sure, let's, yeah, let's, I'm ready to try this one. Uh, this is my spoon. Wow, what a different cup yeah, this very, is. Yeah. It's got it's got a sort of a creamy body to it, I would say. Yeah. And uh got some acidity. It's a very it's a different kind of acidity than the Kenya had. It's a little bit Yeah, I, I've had lower acidity, uh like Sumatras are a little lower usually than this. Yeah. It's a little different. Yeah, but one of the things we do is I mean I buy stuff that that really have some of the acidity and we also can develop the acidity in our roaster uh which i like because because i'm creating a more balanced coffee with the acidity and body uh you know uh rather than one being so much heavier than the other we we can create something that's that's a little more balanced even though it's preponderant uh on the about on the body in this coffee uh and I'm not you tasting any off notes in it. No. I mean, it's just wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, um, 
it's very low in, it is low in acidity it's it's got a little it's got enough to uh not be flat but uh but the body is is uh you can really feel it across your tongue i i, I you know it could be just my taste in coffees but i actually like this one a little better at me so well if they were both uh new crop i mean the 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 uh Sulawesi is a fresher coffee than the Kenya. The, uh, you, I'm sure you would, you would enjoy the Kenya uh, more than you, you are now. I don't know that you would, uh, just as a profile, whether you prefer the Kenya or the Sulawesi, I think from years of knowing you, you would prefer the Sulawesi. But, uh, uh, but it's, it's almost unfair to, to do these two coffees together because one is so much, it's, it's got to be at least six months older than the other. And even though coffee doesn't get stale in the green form, it does lose moisture and it does does change. And even though we you, keep it in a special bags, grain pro bags, to, right. to reduce that uh, change, it still it still does change. Yeah, it's delicious. It's it's uh, this is my. I mean, as you know, I like uh, Sumatras, and this is a, a coffee that definitely I could. I I'm not getting any defects i can't taste any and it's got a, a lot of varietal quality to it uh not overly uh not a lot of acidity but you're right there's a there's definitely some acidity i've had a lot of indonesians that have a lot less yeah it's 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 enough to keep it from being flat it gives it some nice uh a little, a little depth uh uh so there's all complexity to it uh, as, it, as the acidity plays off the body. And um, just, a, just a nice, very clean, sweet, full-bodied coffee. Um, not the kind of uh, earthiness that you might expect from some uh, lower quality Sumatra coffees. Uh, uh, where for years, uh, the Sumatra coffees that were coming into this country were Sumatra 3s and 4s, which uh, are lower quality than Sumatra's 1s or 2s, as you might expect. And uh, we started, uh, we were very fortunate. Uh, we found uh, a broker who had started uh, her career with a uh, truly sensational Sumatra coffee. And that was Erna Knudsen, and uh, the the mother of specialty coffee. And so we were getting this terrific uh, Sumatra coffee uh, right from the beginning. So I, I never really tasted a, one of these crappy Sumatras. I always knew that Sumatra as a really sensational, grade one, fantastic, uh, clean, sweet coffee. And so uh, that's for that. After some many years, the, the rest of the specialty uh, uh, specialty business is uh, has come around to the better quality Sumatras and, and typically that isn't looking for trees or fours anymore, which can taste kind of rubbery. I had the wonderful opportunity of having Sumatras from Erna and from you uh, very early in my coffee enjoyment. So I, uh, I'm spoiled from the beginning on this. Yeah, it was just a terrific coffee. And, and in fact, uh, we, we bought that coffee till about uh, six years ago or so since when uh, Erna retired. And then just recently, the last year, um, I uh, was able to ask uh, another broker that we're using to uh i gave her the contact information for the for the for the sumatra and they sought out the exporter for me and uh and we were lucky enough to get that same coffee once again so we're, we have coffee now from sumatra that we had at the, when we opened in 1986 the same the same uh farm same exporter same quality it's really sensational so i guess what is the why would someone want to learn to cup who isn't buying coffees like you're buying i understand you have to buy uh, a huge amount of coffee but you know i i find 
that it's a really, I don't, you know, obviously I buy coffee through someone like you, but I definitely uh, have found it really interesting whenever I've cupped with you or other people that I know uh, that are roasters. It is really an interesting thing, but well, how would you, I, well, how would you describe it if you had to, if you had to, I'm talking to my neighbor over the fence and I'm explaining to her why, why I'd, uh, she should learn to cup coffee. Why, what do you think from a consumer's point of view, the biggest reason is? Well, um, if you're, uh, really, uh, having fun with your coffee and you are, uh, interested in, uh, trying different coffees and deciding, you know, whether you like those coffees or not, Uh, by assessing them and, and assess them in a way that you can't really if you're just brewing coffee, that you're, you're in your regular method. So, uh, uh, so that would be the reason, because you can, you, can, you can better assess coffee side by side. Yeah, I think of it like a music appreciation class. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's kind of nice to be able to uh, use language, uh, spoken language, to explain uh, what I like about a certain type of music, and it's the same thing for my coffee. I, I just really like that I can, uh, I don't know enough to buy coffee like you do, but I know enough, I mean, but I know enough to, as a consumer, to have an idea when I go to a, a, a roaster that I've never tried before, what I might like to try. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's like, I mean, when you suggested this initially, and we thought, you know, uh, I mean, t to me, if we're gonna do different, two different coffees, you know, brewing two different pots in a Chemex, uh, just, uh, you know, for, for me, you, it, it, the assessment wouldn't, wouldn't be, uh, even as it would be if we can do it this way. So that, that's, that's why I, I thought this would, would make more sense for us. Uh, if we're, if we're going to assess these two different coffees, I mean, I, I prefer my coffee to drink out of a Chemex, uh, as opposed to, and uh, during uh, using this method. But, uh, but if, if we're actually going to talk about the coffee and, and assess the coffee, this is really the way to do it. I've had, uh, I've had uh, fortunately, I've had enough cupping experiences with you that I've, uh, I've learned, I think, a lot to appreciate. And it has changed my taste. It has changed my taste, not only in Sumatra, but in other coffees as well. And my expectations of what is a good coffee from certain regions. So I, uh, I just wanted to share it with uh, our audience today and and uh, hope we can do this again sometime and uh, we'll get a chance to uh, see you in person. I'd love to cup with you again, uh, uh, just uh, both in the same place. But this is a pretty good, you know, I think we got pretty close. I, I was hearing you and I was ta tasting a lot of the same things. I, you certainly put it more eloquently than I did, but can, but uh, I really enjoyed it. So uh, thank you for uh, for sharing your knowledge with us. Oh, my pleasure. It's always it's always better to cup with another person so you can you can maybe taste things that you might have missed by, uh, by looking for what the other person's describing. So it's always good to be with another person while cupping. So thank you. Thank you.